On the second day of October, Halloween gave to me two Michelle actresses and a radu drooling something bloody. Hey everyone, welcome back to our celebration of 31 days of Halloween. I am your pal Bo. I am watching a bunch of movies and then talking to you about them for uh, the next 30 days. Uh, and, it, and here we are. Oh man, I love doing this so much, even if we're doing the subspecies series uh, first, which is exactly what's happening. So today, we are talking about Bloodstone Subspecies 2. Yesterday, we talked about how... Uh, it, it was kind of unusual subspecies was when it was released. It, it, it had authentic sets. It had decent production design, okay special effects, a good gooey shit vampire, and uh, enough melodrama to kind of make it all hang together. And so Ted Nicolau, writer-director of the subspecies series and, and the other canonical films that we will deal with in this run... He picks up Bloodstone, Subspecies 2, right where Subspecies 1 leaves off, which is we have Stefan and Michelle in a casket of their own, and the little demon golems that Radu has created uh, are trying to stitch him back together, and basically they help him uh, get his head back on his body. He was beheaded, I, I misremembered that when we talked about this yesterday. And they pull the stake out of his heart, and bingo, bango, Radu is back in business. He wastes no time in going to the coffin where Michelle and Stefan are, are sleeping uh, with the bloodstone. And he ganks Stefan, kills him immediately, and is about to kill uh, Michelle and get the bloodstone. And then the sun is coming up, and he has to go hide. So Michelle then wakes up once sunset comes and realizes, oh, Stefan is dead. I'm going to grab this bloodstone and, and beat feet. Clearly, Redu is, is back in action. So she is gone. And much of the movie is this. It is Michelle, now played by a new actress. I think Denise Duff is uh, her name, but I will confirm that. And, uh, you know, the, the first actress is kind of fine, but I really think Denise Duff, and maybe I'm just like, oh, she makes it her own because she's in more of these movies or something. But I generally think that she's good, or at least good for what this role and what this movie calls for. And uh, yeah, Denise Duff is her name. And she's in the rest of the movies moving forward. Michelle, the original Michelle, no longer with us. She's gone. Uh, and, and we can all move on with our lives. Uh, not that the original Michelle is bad. I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, suggest for a moment that uh, the, the original actress was somehow inadequate for the role. She was fine. Everybody enjoyed her. Um, but Denise stuff is kind of, you know, like... I, again, she she it really embraces the melodrama, and I appreciate that. Uh, Laura Laura May Tate was the original actress's name. Totally fine actress. Uh, the, you know, went on to do. Uh, she was in I Love Trouble and Nightmare Cafe, and uh, apparently in in a Dead Space movie uh, as well as Digstown. She was in Digstown. I did not recall that, but fantastic. So, yeah. Um, and then Denise Duff rolls in as Michelle and and is much more uh, weepy. And like the, the whole point of this movie, really, is that Michelle is not having a great time as a vampire. She doesn't want to be a vampire. And especially now that Stefan is dead, she has no interest in continuing uh, down this road. But she has no choice. She, you know, she's a vampire and uh, now she is beset by bloodlust. But she also has the bloodstone. And so when Radu wakes up and realizes that not only Michelle uh, is gone, but the bloodstone is gone as well, he is not having it. So he goes to his mother. Yeah, we got a new character introduced. Uh, his mother, known as Mummy, 
uh, because she does, in fact, look like a mummy. I can't tell if she is just a witch or another vampire. She does suck blood. Like, he brings her the blood of his father uh, on, on the blade that he used to kill King Vladislav. And she drinks it up and is like, look, where's the blood son? This is great. I'm glad that you killed your brother. I'm glad you killed your father. You are now set up to rule the vampire world. But where is the blood zone? That that's a critical part of this. And he's like, um, let me explain that part. And <laughs> she's like, what? You've got some girl, uh, which he calls my fledgling. Um, his fledgling has fled. And so Michelle is, uh, you know, goes to a hotel and in one of my favorite bits from any of these movies, I think, uh, there's a gratuitous boob scene in the shower. That's not one of my favorite things, but just so we're keeping score here. There are a couple of gratuitous shower shots, but this is some pretty full frontal kind of action. So again, if you're a sleazeball and are watching these movies for the boobs, like I was when I was, you know, 18 or 19 years old or whatever, when these movies came out, then that's another appeal is that these movies have lots of special effects and vampires running around and drooling blood. And there's also full frontal nudity. So, so, you know, happy days for shithead kids like myself at the time. So Michelle's in a hotel and uh, the sun is coming up and she flips out because she sees the sunlight and goes to the bathroom and hides in the bathtub. And when a cleaning crew comes around, they find her in the bathtub and assume that she is dead. And up to and including a bunch of cops showing up and being like, oh boy, this is not great. An American is now dead in this hotel room. We need to call the embassy. And uh, also, let's put this thing in a body bag, which they do. They put her in a body bag, take Michelle off to the morgue. And uh, later that night, of course, Michelle wakes up in said morgue and is freaked out she does find the bloodstone uh, and all she goes with that into the night where she ultimately finds a theater that she can use to uh, as sort of a lair which provides her with some clothes because it's a theater and they've got a bunch of costumes hanging on racks and there is also handily a glass coffin that she can use to sleep in which is pretty rad like her climbing into the glass coffin and sleeping is in this the backstage of this theater is kind of a nice moment it, it's a, a pretty good idea and visually interesting but she also calls her sister becky now her sister becky uh who looks stirringly like uh laura may tate from the original bloodstone or the original subspecies rather is played by melanie shatner and melanie shatner um is not uh, great in this. Uh, I, I'm not saying that she is a bad actress uh, by any stretch. I am saying that in this in particular, in, in Bloodstone Subspecies 2, she is not what you would call uh, uh, convincing. Um, her line deliveries are shaky at best, but what are you going to do? Um, and uh, anyway, so Becky is back in the the states oh and and just so we get it out of the way yes this is william shatner's daughter and i am not going to make a joke about william shatner being a bad actor and producing bad actors uh from his loins i actually think william shatner in the star trek stuff is very good uh i don't think he is a bad actor he's certainly unique but i think that he plays uh his emotions well in most of those star trek uh movies and in fact his speech at the end of Star Trek 2 will always make me cry, and that is not a bad actor. That is an actor who knows how to deliver. And Melanie Shatner in this film, eh, not so much. Like, if she gave the <laughs> the Wrath of Khan 2 speech about how, of all the souls I've ever met, his was the most human. Uh, that That's William Shatner. Hers would be like, of all the souls I have ever met, his was the most human. That is more of a Melanie Shatner kind of delivery uh, from Bloodstone Subspecies 2. At any rate, she's very pretty, though. Very pretty woman. Uh, not necessarily great uh, as an actress in this particular film. So, um, she comes to uh, Bucharest to try to find her sister who has called her and, and left this 
not a message, talks to her, but it gives her one of those cryptic conversations where she's like, he bit me, you've got to come help me, Becky, because, oh, I can't go on, bye. And you're like, wait, 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 just finish a sentence. He bit me and I can't go on doesn't really work. So anyway, Becky is on her way over. She meets uh, the studly uh, guy who works at the American embassy, um, a guy known as Mel. And there's Lieutenant Marin. These characters will show up in a couple of these movies. And Mel and Lieutenant Marin, obviously skeptical of anything that supernatural might be afoot. They do have the, uh, the bloodstone. And they think that what's happened is that Michelle stole this bloodstone from somebody and maybe got ganked as a result, not knowing that she is now on the loose. Uh, actually, they do know that she's on the loose because Lieutenant Marin has to make an apology of like, hey, sorry, I thought your sister was dead. I would have sworn to it, but sure enough, she was alive. At any rate. Um, so th those are major characters with the exception of one who is this uh, professor, Professor Popescu, Popescu, who is a sort of a folklorist. And he is the one that's like, hey, here's what the bloodstone is. The bloodstone is uh, this stone that bleeds with the blood of the saints. And for some vampires, it is a way for them to survive without consuming human blood. For others, it is addictive. And uh, in the case of the Vladislavs, you know, they're, as we've discussed before, Redu is kind of addicted to it and, and believes it gives him power. And in a, it has supernatural powers aside because obviously his mother wants it, although for what reason is, isn't totally explicit. And anyway, uh, Michelle is trying not to eat people, but ends up of uh, giving in to her thirst eventually. Radu clocks that Michelle's sister Becky is in town and is going to go bite her. And there's a really funny scene where he is really setting up to bite her in the in the leg to drink from her, which is kind of his move. He likes to, you know, drool over a woman's leg in, uh, in their hotel room. And the phone rings and he gets interrupted and... You know, it's very sad. I was about to go full Tarantino, and you interrupted me. Uh, so, anyway, he has to take off. And he finds Michelle, finally, and is like, hey, here's the deal. You can absolutely try to deny who you are, but you are a vampire, and you need to feed, and you are my fledgling, and I can offer you incredible power. You just need to give up the the your humanity forget like cry over your sister let that flush that out of your system and then understand that you are no, you are no longer human humans are our food and we can rule together cuz he has a crush and as the series goes on he starts saying things like i have sacrificed everything for you fledgling and you're like, yeah, you guys just met. And also, she was with your brother. And I think that's the root of this, is that he wants whatever uh, his brother had. But it, it turns into a thing where he just starts saying that Michelle was his all along. And that he he wants her above everything. And tells his mother this. Um, I can't remember if it's this film or the third film, quite frankly. But he does tell her at a, at a certain point, like, I just want to be with my fledgling like I will sacrifice anything for her and his mother is like you're an idiot you are you are a stupid stupid vampire you're a shit vampire and you're a stupid vampire and you you need to give up this Michelle bullshit because uh she's going to destroy you she's going to destroy us all and we go to the castle finally uh Lieutenant Marin Mel Becky uh and and our professor all sort of converge on this uh, castle. And uh, Becky is, of course, taken hostage by Radu, who uh, wants to use her as sort of a sacrifice, like to get Michelle to feed off of Becky and therefore give up her humanity. Like, if she feeds off her sister, then, you know, she has given up any sense of mortality and familial love and all of that. And uh, Mel and uh, 
our Professor Propescu gets ganked by Mummy uh, by a sword through the chest. And so she's bouncing around as well. And then Mel and uh, Mel comes in, kind of releases Becky. Becky ends up uh, burning Mummy who with like a torch or something and she runs off. And then Michelle brings, uh, or sorry, Michelle is the one who burns Mummy, but releases Becky, and Becky is the one who stabs Radu in the heart with another spear again. And so Mummy is burned, theoretically. Radu is once again stabbed in the chest after this big finale. Uh, Mel is okay. Becky is not bit. Michelle is a vampire, but kind of takes him to the edge of the castle uh, before you know, she steps into the sunlight and is like, Hey, I'll be here later tonight. And Becky's like, okay, well, we're going to go back to the hotel. We'll come back here tonight and then we'll figure out how to get you home and all of that stuff. And as Mel and Becky leave, then, uh, uh, poor Michelle is grabbed by a now burnt mummy and dragged back into the castle. And that's kind of the end of the movie that it, it ends on that cliffhanger of, Radu theoretically is dead, but we know based on the first... I mean, if you behead him and stab him in the chest and he comes back from that, just stabbing him in the chest, probably not going to do the trick. So, uh, Radu, of course, going to come back. Mummy is still alive, and now they have Michelle. And we also have Becky and uh, Mel, our uh, embassy guy, kind of bouncing around as well with Lieutenant Mary. And so that is sort of the setup for the next movie uh, in service to this one. And so how does Bloodstone Subspecies 2 stand on its own? Um, it's okay. It, it feels like a middle chapter and not in the Empire Strikes Back kind of way. But there's interesting stuff in it. And, and it's the stuff that appeals to me about all of these subspecies movies. Which is, I like the fact that Michelle is so clearly struggling with her turning into a vampire and she's not happy about it and she's weeping and angry but occasionally you know feral and animalistic and i really like that thing um i like the introduction of the mummy character it really blows out the lore a little bit even if it's a little messy in terms of what all of this means but it makes it a bigger world and a bigger universe and that's kind of fun uh, the real drag of the movie is all of the stuff that has to do with um, Becky and Mel and Lieutenant Marin and all that stuff. Even though I like Lieutenant Mar Marin as a character, he's, you know, remains skeptical throughout, but is a, a fun character and, and a guy that is like, I don't know about all of this, uh, which is kind of fun. And, uh, the, but the problem is you need somebody that's sort of the human face of all of this the human being that is uh, keeping an eye on things and letting the audience be uh privy to what's going on but but through their eyes you know the the proxy for the audience and so forth because if everything's supernatural then it just escapes into a movie that is purely fantastic and has no grounding in reality anymore so you do need those human characters but mel and becky are just so like bleh. they're just so white bread and plain and uninteresting that you're like yeah 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 I know that we've got to make some kind of nod towards the real world and when we talk about vampire journals we'll we'll talk about how you do kind of need that thing um but in subspecies 2 it's just the least interesting part of it and there should be something like in subspecies the fact that all of these characters, the human characters, are struggling against vampires is kind of interesting, especially when, um, you know, all, all of Michelle's friends get bit and they're becoming the brides of Radu and whatnot. That stuff is interesting because you still have Michelle losing her friends and being hysterical about it. And she ends up being like the only human being involved, really. But that, that's something. And you still have the human that you followed from the beginning where she didn't know anything about vampires, didn't think they were real, to, oh my goodness, now I'm bit and I'm becoming a vampire. Like, that's a good journey for that that character. And Becky doesn't really have a, a journey other than, I want to save my sister, oh my goodness, vampires are real, and then I'll see you tomorrow, is, is where we land with that character. So, that is frustrating. Um, but it's still a pretty good subspecies movie. And, and the... 
effects work got handed off to Wayne Toth and, uh, and, and one of his partners in this movie. I think the effects work is pretty good. It's a lot of latex appliances and masks and gloves and stuff like that. But I, I like it. And Radu is especially gooey. Like, they are leaning hard into him being a gross, drooling shit vampire in this movie. And that never, like, nobody ever pulls up on the yoke. It, it, from here on out, Radu is just going to be a gross, disgusting uh, shit vampire. And and I like that. That that works for me. I like him being gross. So, Bloodstone Subspecies 2, if you're following along, uh, or if you just enjoy hearing me try to wrestle my way through the lore of these movies, then great. But I think this is okay. Again, I, I it, these movies are generally less than 90 minutes long. And by the time you get to the end of them, you're like, oh, okay, that was fun enough. Uh, this, like subspecies, is a great movie to have on in the background while you're doing other Halloween-related stuff. And and just pause for every now and again to be like, so what's going on? Oh, Michelle's about to bite that dude? That's cool. Oh, look, Michelle in that glass coffin's pretty rad. Oh, my God, do I see her bush? Oh, why is Raidu just leaking more from other orifices now? And who is this mummy person again? Like, all of that is kind of fun. And it, it's quick enough, the pace is good enough, that by the time you get to the end of the movie, it almost doesn't matter that not that much really happens, because it happens quickly enough that it it doesn't uh, overstay its welcome. So, uh, Subspecies 2, uh, thumbs up from me. Although, you know, it's always that caveat of, like, this isn't great. It's not a great movie, but it's kind of fun, and it's from this era of independent horror filmmaking, this straight-to-VHS, straight-to-DVD kind of era, where, you know, these directors like Ted Nicolau just gets to make this weird thing, and it goes on for movie after movie. It's it's his vision sort of unfolding. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. We're going to get to some of the stuff that doesn't work uh, as we go through the series, but I dig it. I think Subspecies 2 is fun. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you are enjoying this. Uh, tomorrow, of course, we will be doing Subspecies 3. And in years past, I've been real like, oh, tomorrow you'll have to come back and find out what we're doing. We're going to do all the Subspecies movies. What happens after that? I won't tell you. There are going to be some other series and some other little tidbits. But there's no point in pretending that tomorrow is not going to be Subspecies 3. So uh, come back tomorrow for more subspecies fun, more Halloween fun. I hope that you are having uh, the best start to your Halloween season. Keep it spooky out there, and I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.